And so then all of a sudden I was gripped with this. Oh my gosh. You know, he did something. He's real. He saw me and it just like, wow. It was like this whoosh of reality check and humility. And like, you know, it just, all, it was a, it was a, I don't even know the right word. It stunned me is probably mm-hmm. the best word. And I, and I, I was then faced with a decision. Am yeah. I going to keep my word or am I going to be the hypocrite that I hate? And uh, obviously I chose to follow him and get in his word and yeah. And what is your wife's name that you've been with him for 35 years? I'm sorry. Say again. What's your wife's name? Uh, Karina. Karina. Karina, Very nice. So you've been with her 35 years. So they definitely live there. Uh, I didn't want to ask you about that word. You said you you said that you hated hypocrisy. What was it about hypocrisy that you hated? Oh man. Yeah. That's a, that's a bit of a story. Um, When uh, in the church, uh, then when I was a kid and obviously still today, you have, you've got a mixture of people. Mm-hmm. You've got those people that are, are truly, they've given their life to Jesus and they're going after him and they're on fire. You've yep. got those people that have given their life to Jesus and they're in the middle of a, of a messy sanctification, kind of trying to get free of whatever process. Mm-hmm. And then you've got those that have learned the, the Christian things to do and how to look the part but truly don't have that relationship. And I I didn't know those differences, obviously, when I was a kid. But, you know, Paul told Timothy that that interesting statement that there are those that take a form of godliness, but but deny its power. And he said, avoid those people. Mm -hmm. And it's a it's a it's kind of it feels harsh, like it feels like a strong statement. Well, I didn't know that verse as a kid, but but I will tell you the the I saw the fruit of those who had no relationship with him, but, but had some, uh, Christian, uh, how do you say they learn the rituals, they learn the stuff to do, they learn Mm -hmm. to check the boxes, but then behind the scenes, I would see the drama and I would see the fights and I would see how they treat people. And I was like, screw that. If that's Christianity, I don't want it. And then, and then when I'm running the streets with all these guys, and I'm not seeing any any of these same people that supposedly are Christians share the gospel with us or you know try to lead us to God. You know, it just it just messed with me and it made me be a bit more bitter towards people. Um, it made me spe- particularly Christianity, Christians, and just like mm-hmm. you know, I don't know if I believe in all that because of that. And so um, it, when I encountered the love of God in such a real way that I couldn't deny, you know that then that started the journey. I was going to say, then, how have you dealt with that over the years and has your attitude changed when you came to know the word of God? <laughs> yeah, that's a great one. So uh, there's lots to say there. Um, I'll try to be concise. I- I'll say this, that when when I began, um, when I began to walk out ministry and I saw how hard it was, more humbling happened. When I began to learn more about grace, more humbling happened. When I, mm-hmm. when I recognized God as father and realized he wanted to be a dad to me, a lot, a lot, a lot of humbling happened. And, and then, you know, when I became a dad myself, more humbling. So when I realized I'd messed up my marriage, more humbling. So, you know, I walked out this journey that you could, you could almost put a timeline and say all these things when I was humble, they call it my humility timeline, if you will. And as I walked out all those humblings, what I then began to do was learn how to love people better. Cause then yeah. I had a new revelation for, wow, if, if, if I needed to be humbled there, you know, what, how, how am I judging other people wrong? How mm-hmm. am I, what if they are in the middle of their sanctification process and there's just looks messy and I just am judging them wrong. And so it really kind of put me in that back step of like, you know, my journey of faith is different than other people. And their journey is going to be different than mine. And if God's helping me get free of anger today and he's helping them get free of porn today and it's different, I need to not judge their process, nor do I want them to judge mine. And I need to just, you know, if Jesus said the greatest thing to do is love, then how about I just get good at that and Mm -hmm. focus on that and the conviction stuff. I don't need to put my convictions on other people. I need to walk out my walk of faith and, you know, if someone asks me advice, then I give them advice. And those people that I'm their pastor, you know, I need to pastor them well. But in, but even them, even the people I shepherd, you know, it's a, uh, I can't, um, 
I can't, I can't be their Holy Spirit. That's not my role. My role is mm-hmm. to point them to Jesus, point them to the Holy Spirit, uh, shepherd them toward him, teach them about him, be them, be, you know, uh, live that in front of them, but not cross the line where I judge them as if I am him. That's the mm-hmm. line that we as believers and ministers should never cross. Cause that's when we try to, you know, take on the God role. That's not ours to take. He did say earlier, of course, that when you when you first came to know Jesus, you wanted to know who he was. You wanted to know him as a father. Yeah. So you started reading the Gospels. So what advice would you give to somebody who was just starting out now and wanted yeah, to know more about God? Yeah, question. And actually, I have this regularly. My, my, my thing is this. Um, in this world, Jesus said himself, you're going to have trouble. And mm-hmm. he gave this encouraging word. And he said, be encouraged because I've overcome the world. And then in John 14, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So those two statements of our Lord, they tell me that every new believer needs to first start with falling fully, completely in love with Jesus, the person, the man, the son of God. Uh, the, the more that we can just study him and know him, mm-hmm. not just know about him, but really genuinely like, Lord, you know, b- put yourself in his shoes, put yourself in the in the different you know, as you're reading the Gospels, try to put yourself in the story and be there and feel it and mm-hmm. and, and notice how Jesus shepherded people. Like that's I'm actually writing a kind of a book, if you will, around this topic of shepherding, how Jesus shepherded people. I call it shepherding the master's way. And it's like, you know, how he how he shepherded people is how we should shepherd people. How mm-hmm. he loved people is how we should love people. So my my greatest encouragement to, to all is that God wants to be a father to you. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So there is no greater way to know your dad in heaven. Life Stories Worldwide is broadcast live every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time. We broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and StreamYard. Why not join us every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time for Life Stories Worldwide. Speak to us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can, simply by dialing plus four four seven nine four three double five zero two eight seven. Call us now. Then to study, study, and know, know the master. Mm-hmm. And study him and, and, and know him more. And as you do, uh, I can tell you with absolute certainty, you're going to know your dad in heaven more, and you can't go wrong. <laughs> Never that's, a waste of time. That's quite a long process, but you did say in uh, in your story, you said to, that you, you still had a lot of orphan thinking. What sure. do you mean by orphan thinking? Yeah, so that's a great question. So, you know, when uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know, the first things that Adam did was try to try to protect himself, try to provide for himself. Uh, you know, this defense mechanism showed up, and yet, you know, a few hours before that happened. Those didn't exist. He, mm-hmm. You know, it says at the end of Genesis 2 that he was naked and not ashamed. They didn't know fear. They didn't know shame. You know, before that, God provided everything for them. He was their protector. Um, they weren't dealing with animals trying to kill them or things like that. And so all of a sudden, a mindset hit Adam where I need to, it's up to me. I need to do I'm all on my own. I need to provide for myself, protect myself, make my own way. And in some ways you could argue as a, as an American, as one I, I love, you know, I'm a Texan born and raised, you know, that's, that's gotten even into our culture in American culture, this be a self-made person. And, and, yeah. and the problem mm-hmm. with that is it fosters a mindset that's godless. It fosters a mindset that I don't need God. And as a pastor, as a minister, as a son to the Lord, I have to refute that and argue against that to say, no, that's not how God made us. He wants us to be successful. He wants to, uh, he wants to see us shine and all the gifts that he's given us, but never apart from him. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus said in John 15 that he who abides in me will bear much fruit. It's like, we have to, we have to make that choice to say, I don't, I don't want to do life without God. I don't want to do stuff for God necessarily. I want to do it with him. And so one of the things that I like to, to preach and teach to people is make a choice to, to live a with God life, you know, where it's, where it's Lord, I want to do everything with you. 
And, are, and it, you know, are we doing stuff for him as we do it? Like, are we serving the kingdom? Of course we are. But the mindset is that I need him when I get up in the morning because I don't know what I'm going to face today. Mm-hmm. I need him to parent my boys. I need him to shepherd my bride's heart. I need him to pay, you know, to pay my bills well, to work my job well. Like all the things in life, there's, there's a few things that are always true. And that is you do not know what tomorrow holds. You do not know what the next hour holds. And so for a human being to presume, I got this, when you clearly don't know, to me, it's foolish. And so my argument is, is that the, the orphan minded thinking is when I live a life that says, I got this. Yeah, I live a life that says I have to protect myself. I have to provide for myself. And, I, and you know, people out there that, that love your, you know, right to bear arms and guns. And, I, you know, please don't hear what I'm saying a different way. I don't mean don't protect yourself in that sense. I just mean that when the mindset is that I'm on my own, that's orphan minded thinking. When the mindset is that I'm, I'm totally alone, you know, nobody sees me, nobody cares. I got to do this all myself. God would look at that person and say, that's a lie. I see you. I love you. I've already proven it. I died for you. you I'm waiting on you. You're not waiting on me. I'm waiting mm-hmm. on you. So you moved on in your journey. Excellent. Thank you very much. That was actually an excellent answer, that one. Um, was there one, one for Israel part of that journey for you? One for Israel um, came after I had been in, um, you know, knew God as father, already walked out a lot of quests and, and that kind of thing. I had reached a bit of a burnout with the corporate world, the corporate uh, industry. I was in, I uh, worked for a marketing firm at the time mm-hmm. as their, uh, as their uh, vice president over all of technology. So I was overseeing all the, you know, development and QA and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I just, I was traveling and and my son was going through a real hard time at school, getting bullied and just different things were going on. And so it was kind of a, I needed to be there for my family more and I wasn't. And I kind of reached a place of decision where I'm like, Lord, I need, I need, I need to get out of here. Like I need to, I need to change to be able to be who I am. I don't want to fall morally. I don't want to fall into anger again. Like I, I don't want to go backwards. And so yeah. I, I cried out to him and he, he led me to, uh, to a guy named Eris Seref, who's the president over One for Israel. We connected and I'd gone to a benefit dinner uh, and connected with the ministry then and and become a supporter, that type of thing. And and so One for Israel became um, a bit of a, I guess, a lifeline, you might say, from the Lord. Mm-hmm. Uh, but hey, this is, an, you know, I've got a new adventure for you. Uh, looking back, I, I really think it was, you know, God's plan all along. I think he was, <laughs> you know, I, I think it was always the plan because the the role that I've gotten to play with One for Israel has been um, just just cool, cre- just uh, kind of a core, you know, core cog, if you will, in the engine. And uh, it's just been wonderful. How old are your, are your boys? You said your two boys, is that right? Uh, my oldest one is is about to turn 20. And then right. I've got one that just turned 16 and one that'll wow. be 12 in October. And how are they doing? They're great. They're great. My oldest has uh, kind of followed me and gone further on electrical. So he's uh, working on a journeyman's license in the electrical field. And then uh, my middle one loves history. He's just about to start his sophomore year in high school. And he uh, thinks he wants to be a pastor or a history okay. teacher. So he's kind of, <laughs> you know, but they, uh, and the, all three of them know Jesus. My, my youngest is the, um, has a passion with, you know, designing and, and shoes and shirts. He's kind of got this creative side that he loves to design those kinds of things at a young age. And, and so, uh, he's got a lot of charisma. So, you know, here, the thing that I can say about my boys, um, actually there's a lot of things, but to be brief, they, they, all three of them know the Lord. Like I'm a witness. I got to baptize all three of them myself. Um, they personally asked Jesus to be their savior. It wasn't like, uh, uh, like something I pushed on them because I'm a pastor or anything like that. I, I don't like the PK mess. I don't like, mm-hmm. I was going to ask you about know, that yet. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't like that kind of stuff. I, I, you know, I've told my boys, like, if you feel pressure in something, man, speak up to me, let, let me know so we can make an adjustment. Cause I, I don't want you to, and they all three have, they all three have shared with me, Hey, because you're, you know, Josh Massey and I'm, I, you know, I, I'm a missionary to pastors in my city. And mm-hmm. so I do a lot of missions work with pastors and building bridges and that type of thing. And so, you know, there's, there's pressures that they've felt around that. And so, 
me and my bride, we do our very best to try to just mitigate that. And if that means they need to miss an event, you know, kind of a thing, then we let them, you know, it's just, it's one of those things. We, we don't try to make them be at everything. And so we really want them to love the Lord for themselves and have their own relationship with God. And so, uh, you know, we don't make our home do a Bible study every single day. Like we try to have a healthy balance yeah. um, so that they don't. It's very easy to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Life Stories at Lunch, to receive notifications of when we are live. Simply click the bell. If you would like to contact us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can. Simply by emailing lifestoriesworldwide at gmail.com or visit our website at lifestoriesworldwide.com. I don't want them to hate church. You know, I want them to yeah. love church. I want them to love the Lord. And and uh, that's not an easy journey as a pastor, no. missions person, <laughs> you know, um, um, yeah. You said your wife Corinne is involved as well. Is that correct? Um, yeah, she's yeah she's involved. My bride's gifting has been in the area of, of uh, nursery ministry, kids ministry. Um, mm -hmm. She's I call her the baby whisperer. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she's just she can take any crying baby and and, and put him to peace. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it must be difficult for you as a pastor. I just say you got three sons. How would you feel if one of the sons decided, well? I don't want this Jesus stuff anymore. <laughs> yeah. So we actually had that conversation earlier this oh, right. year. Actually. Um, there was uh, or actually, no, it was four, last year, fourth quarter last year. Um, there was some interesting things that were going on in America and, and uh, different things that they were feeling with their friends. And, and, uh, and so I, you know, I just, just sat down with them and I just said, listen, you know, how's, how's y'all's heart? Um, anybody that knows me, they know kind of one of my little phrases I, I use a lot is how's your heart. And, uh, I, I like to ask that cause I, you know, people ask all the time, how you doing? And, you know, nobody hardly tells the truth on stuff like that. You you say, how's your heart? Then usually you can get a better answer, you know? And so I was asking that of my boys one day and, and, uh, and I said, listen, I want you to feel safe. Like I really genuinely want to know how you're doing. And, and, uh, and two of them, my younger two, both of them were like, you know, dad, I'm, I'm wrestling with what I believe, you know, I see this happening. Mm -hmm. I see that's ha that happening. And I'm, and I just, am, I'm not sure. And, uh, and both of them, this is after they've, you know, had an encounter with God. Both of them have, have experienced the love of God. Like they, but just, uh, you know, they've witnessed, that's the hard thing about being a pastor. They've witnessed the hard sides of ministry. They've seen yeah. betrayal. Uh, they've seen pastors fall. Um, you know, they've, they morally, they've, they've seen a lot of stuff that I could not protect them from. And so I have to walk it out with them. And so I just listened to their heart, man. I just sat out and was like, okay, I said, listen, first off, I want you, I'm not panicking. Uh, you are where you are and your relationship with God has to be your own. So, uh, if you, if you'll allow me, I'd love to walk out your questions and I'm going to, I'll give you answers and you wrestle with them and, if you choose to believe them, then great. And if you don't, you don't. But your your walk with God has to be your own. And so we did. Um, and they they brought up all the things that they were struggling with and what they'd seen and and how it made them feel. And uh, my oldest has really struggled with 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 my dad, my earthly dad, and just kind of mm -hmm. the, the the lack of 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 care and engagement and involvement. And so it, that's affected him in some ways. And. And uh, my, my other two, you know, they've all seen some pastors fall morally and just like, you know, what do you do with that? They've all seen some leaders be uh, uh, harsh and not not good to people. And so it's uh, it's it becomes a challenge for for a young mind. It's like, hey, wait a second. I'm following Jesus. Aren't they, too? Shouldn't I be able to trust them? And so for me, I, I can't we can't dominate, you know, Jesus taught us in Ephesians six to not exasperate your children's don't exasperate yeah. them. And that's as a minister, if we let our ego get in the way, then that can make us feel like we have, Oh my gosh, my kid's not following Jesus. I got it right. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, like I'm accountable to God for my family before I am other people. And I have to lead them to him in a, in a gentle shepherd way. And, and mm -hmm. I haven't always been good at that. Like I said, I struggle with anger you know, I didn't get free of that really. And, you know, until 
probably 10 ish years ago or something. And so, you know, my, anyway, it's just those things they've witnessed things. And so we just walked it out together and, and they've renewed their relationship with the Lord. Um, they're all, all three of them are doing awesome. Um, they, you know, can share the gospel themselves and, you know, they got past it. Excellent. Well, it's been fantastic speaking to you, Josh. I mean, really, I love your philosophy and I love your story, of course, and your family's done as well. Um, now, of all the questions we ask on here, there's one question we always ask the okay. uh, people. Together. Of all the decisions you have made in your life, what is the best decision you've ever made? <laughs> yeah, undeniably to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Un- undeniable. Knowing him as Savior, knowing God as Father, nothing has changed my life more. Nothing has meant more. Nothing has affected me more than that. Well, thank you, Josh, so much for answering our questions very honestly and openly. And we will share these, of course, again and again over the YouTube. And with that, I'm just going to bring back in uh, our brother, Alan. Thank you, George. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much for sharing your story and also for asking those questions. So honestly, in actual fact, somebody said, thank you for your honesty. Yeah, you said wonderful teachings, wonderful testimonies you share. We appreciate your time and taking time out to share, and it's been a real blessing. I'm sure many, many people are going to be blessed by what you share. Be challenged as well, as well as be blessed. We thank you so much. We pray God will continue to bless you and use you in your, your work, in your ministry. We pray you'll see many, many lives change, in, including in Israel. Pray you'll see great <laughs> things happen Amen. in Israel. We Amen. thank you so much. Thank you, uh, George. Thank you, Howard. Thank you all for being with us today. If you do want to contact us, you've seen the uh, telephone number. You can phone that number. Uh, it's on your screen. You can phone that number if you want help. You can also go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com, and you'll find lots of information there to help you, including a, a Bible app that you can download to help you in your own private studies. And I will encourage you to go to our YouTube channel, Life Stories at Lunch. Click on there, subscribe. And I encourage others to subscribe. Be social media evangelists, passing on the good news to many, many people. So I would like to invite you to join us again next week at 8 o'clock UK time on Life Stories Worldwide for another life story. Again, coming from the USA again next week, uh, Christopher Burge. Uh, he has um, worked in the aerospace industry since 2006. Currently, he's a project man- manager for a leading uh, aerospace company. And in 2003, he also got involved in professional skating. So we should have an interesting story to share next week. It's 8 o'clock next week, UK time. So thank you so much. May God bless you. May you know the peace of God that passes all understanding. May the joy of Jesus fill your heart. God bless you all. Bye. If you would like to contact us here at Life Stories Worldwide, you can simply by emailing lifestoriesworldwide at gmail.com or visit our website at lifestoriesworldwide.com.